Dear friends, dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to thank to Professor Berit Schneider Stickler and the board of the Austrian Society of Logopedics, Phoniatrics and Pedodiology for inviting me here. I am so honored and pleased to be with you at the 100th anniversary of the OGLPP. Today, I'll be talking about aging voice. As we all know, aging is a gradual decline in the body's ability to repair and regenerate, which decreases the function, increases vulnerability, and even leads to death. Today, we are an aging society by 2050, the world's population that will be more than 60 years old will be more than 2 billion people. And they are all in the active community. They are not just retired. So expectations about the aged period is increasing. There are very well-defined mechanisms of aging at the molecular, cellular, or systemic level, but we will not be discussing these today because we have a limited time. When we talk about aging, we should define differential aging, which means that we know that age is a number. We have a chronological age, but not all the individuals are affected at the same level, which makes the definition of physiological age. This is usually led by genetical factors, environmental influence, and individual lifestyles. Even Shakespeare, one of his, in one of his plays, quoted as aged men, turning again toward childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. So all the tissues age, and of course, vocal tract is not an exception. And all the sub parts of the vocal tract is also aging. When we look at the aerodynamic part at the pulmonary level, we know that the chest wall compliance is reduced. There is usually a thoracic kyphosis and there is a decline at the elasticity and recoil of the lung tissue. When we look at the glandular secretions at the vocal tract, we see that there is a glandular atrophy at the whole levels, which decreases the quantity and changes the quality of the secretions that are the main uh, protectors against trauma of the low vocal folds. When we look at the cartilages and the joints, we know that most of the cartilages do calcify or ossify while aging, and these, uh, the ossified parts are usually relevant with the sites which are uh, more prone to mechanical force. And at the cricoaritinoid joint, we know that the articular surfaces are tint. There is disorganization of the collagen fibers uh, and the cartilage matrix, which leads to surface irregularities. And this influences the extent of approximation of the vocal folds and the smoothness of the adjustments during voicing. At the nerve level, we know that there is a decreased amount, a decreased percentage of myelinated nerve fibers and decreased uh, diameter of the axons. And we see degeneration of motor neurons, which leads to changes in structural and functional integrity of the neuromuscular junctions, which means a uh, functional denervation. There are loss of motor units. There is denervation and re cycles and decreased remodeling of motor units, which leads to progressive loss of mass change and distribution and size of muscle fibers and decrease in function. We talk about muscle, but when we look at the epithelium and lamina propria, the vibrating surfaces of the vocal fold, we know that there is significant reduction in the epithelial cell density with increasing age, which deteriorates the barrier function of the epithelium. For example, when we look with the electron microscope to the epithelium, the soft undulations and minimal desiccation that we see in a young epithelium is changed to more curved, uh, more curved epithelium with more increased discrimination. And when we look even closer, uh, the micro curves, the prominent intracellular junctions are changed to well-defined cells, deep sulci, and high amount of discrimination. About hyaluronic acid, there is a decrease of hyaluronic acid at all levels, at both the superficial and the deeper parts of the lamina propria. About the interstitial proteins, there is a remodulation of the decorin and fibromodulin uh, amounts, uh, which leads to uh, decrease at the daily remodeling of mild vocal fault injuries resulting from vocal trauma or external irritants. So there is a, we, 
What we also see at the elastic fibers is that there is a distribution shift at the collagen and elastic fibers. Morphological alterations and metabolical changes are seen, which again leads to, with electron microscopy, the collagen and elastin fibers that are parallel to basement membrane are irregular, increased, and dense uh, collagen fibers, which decreases the pliability of the vocal folds. When we just think about the optimal care steps while taking care of a voice patient, what we realize with subjective evaluation is that uh, most of the patients with aging voice or presbyphonia are heard as weak, hoarse or harsh, with vocal tremor, with increased breathiness, increased strain, and unsteadiness. When we look at the pitch changes, men's voices tend to become higher, and women's voices is actually a little bit controversial. In some women, uh, it's usually lower, and in some women, it becomes higher. But of course, there are many individual variations here. The projection is decreased. The loudness is decreased. There is an inability to express themselves, especially in noisy or uh, crowded environments. There is a decreased endurance. There is a vocal fatigue. The phonatory duration is shortened. Decreased speech velocity decreases speech intellig intelligibility and also, of course, this has a negative impact on quality of life. So that's what we call an old voice, which is seen at least at the 10% of population above 65 years of age. It's so, it's so usual that we can understand the age of a patient if he is old or young, then we just uh, say hello at the phone. As you well know, we have lots of indexes that we use to evaluate our patients uh, subjectively. Uh, the most common of them that we use is the voice handicap index, and there is one aging voice index for this. If you want, uh, you can use at this, uh, this one at the clinic or for clinical uh, research purposes. When we look at the aerodynamic evaluation, we know that the maximum phonation time uh, is decreased and the airway resistance tends to be lower in the elder population than the young ones. And the EMG amplitude, if we can perform an EMG, EMG amplitude for thyroid lateral cricoaritonate, and cricothyroid muscles are lower for the elder people. And we, when we objectively examine the larynx we, and we look at the vocal folds, we see that there is a decreased hydration of the vocal fold mucosa. As we said, there are reduced secretions. The vocal processes are usually prominent, as you see here. Vocal folds are thin, tense, and there is an atrophic mucosa, uh, which is the result of both atrophy uh, and, and the number of epithelial, decrease at the number of the epithelial cells. And of course, plus a decrease at the superficial lamina propria. There is a thyroid muscle atrophy, which is more frequent in males. And this atrophy usually leads to a glottal incompetence during phonation, and there is a reduced uh, vocal uh, mucosal wave amplitude. If you want to classify these findings at the larynx, uh, if you want to classify presby larynx, these are the conditions that are related with the uh, presby larynx. Vocal folds are atrophied. There is vocal fold bowing. Vocal processes are prominent. There is a supraglottal hyperactivity that we see during phonation. And there is a decreased amplitude uh, of the causal amplitude. And laryngeal structures may have a tremor. If we have at least two of these, six of them, this is called the type one principal larynx. And if we have plus that, plus those two ones, and the glottal insufficiency while phonation, this is called a type two presbylarynx, according to Santos and colleagues. When we think about the acoustics, what we, what we hear uh, when our patients phonate, uh, we always know that uh, there is a fundamental frequency decrease at around 30 years at females, and this decreases after 8 to 90, but uh, this is, as I said, controversial. In some studies, it's seen that uh, the female fundamental frequency may increase. This may be usually related with uh, other 
uh, airway pathologies or smoking. When we look at the males, it is usually more obvious. There is a real decline after 60 years of age. So uh, the, fund, uh, the fundamental frequency is higher uh, and the variability in the fundamental frequency is higher also in male. When we look at the uh, perturbation measures, uh, the jitters and shimmers, it's usually the frequency is usually more frequent and more uh, stable, but the amplitude perturbations are more affected by degeneration of uh, the vocal tract and aging. So how can we manage uh, aging voice? As we all know, phonation is not the only uh, function of glottis. So when phonation is affected, the other activities of the glottis may also be affected. So this will address all of them. When we look at our patients, as you see here, besides this phonia, we also have sometimes a compensatory falsetto, as I said, decreased loudness, vocal fatigue, and aspiration of fluids sometimes. Our aim to treat this is to fill the existing space, if possible, to regain the viscoelastic properties, and of course, to increase the quality of voice. For this purpose, we have three main routes. First one is voice therapy. Second one is vocal fold augmentation by injection laryngoplasty. And third one is the laryngeal framework surgery. When we talk about voice therapy or stimulation of larynx, there are studies that show that singing is very nice to keep the quality of voice while aging. Voice of a frequent singer remains more stable during aging than, a, than the voice of a ninth singer. And some modalities that are used in literature about uh, the changes of voice quality at aging voice are vocal function exercises, forte, Lee Silverman voice treatments and combined approaches on vocal hygiene and vocal dynamics. If you want to make an injection, as in all patients with glottal insufficiency, we usually use hyaluronic acid as a, a temporary injectable. And we also use calcium hydroxyapatite as a more long-term injectable. We can, of course, inject those patients per orally in the operating room or in the clinic transnasally or percutaneously via the trans, uh, the thyroid or cricothyroid approach. If we go to framework surgery, if we have a larger glottal gap that is difficult to fill with injectables, we do make a medialization laryngoplasty or thyroplasty type one. And we know the techniques, uh, the very well established techniques of this. We open a window on the thyroid cartilage and different materials like silastic, cortex, or pre-manufactured materials like Montgomery or Matsushima may be used. And of course, different injectables uh, like calcium hydroxyapatite, uh, calcium, not calcium hydroxyapatite, but other calcium products uh, is the one you see here, calcium phosphate, I tried to say calcium phosphate, or uh, the fat of the patient himself can be used as well. And there are also new uh, materials that both we can inject and medialize the patient. It's called the voice implant. This can be used to fill the existing space between the vocal folds and to gain a more uh, closed, more reliable vocal fold uh, closure while phonating. And there are promises from the regenerative medicine field as well. Uh, especially about the basic fibroblast, uh, fi fibroblast growth factor 2. Uh, there are few studies about fibroblast growth factor injected, injected to aging voice, and there is one systematic review just published in 2023 on this. These results are promising. Of course, we need more uh, randomized, more controlled studies to be able to talk about this uh, with confidence. So, not all the individuals age at the same way, and not all the individuals uh, need the same kind of approach, of course. So addressing on the uh, contributing factors on the different parts of the vocal tract will be nice. 
physical stimulation as always, uh, if possible, voicing as much as possible in a reliable manner will be perfect. Of course, with psychological support and the patient-tailored prevention and treatment approach for each individual will be great uh, to deal with aging voice. Thank you very much for your patience, for being with me, for listening to me. And I hope you have a great day uh, to celebrate your 100th anniversary. I was so happy to be with you in this Jubilee. Thank you. Have a nice day.